YouTube and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Lorraine Marie and I'm back with another reaction for you guys and you already know before we get into this video hit that button down below. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel. So you really like the um the nuke top five video I did. The last one I did was like of like um like spirits like ghosts it was like a ghost video but today instead i have the five unsolved mysteries caught on tape his channel is really interesting so i would like to continue reacting to his channel i want you guys to comment down below what is the next nuke top five video you would like for me to react to so i can react to those first before I find, you know, I'll find something myself and be interested and I'll react to that. I'd rather react to your suggestion first. So make sure you drop that comment down below. And yeah, we're just about to get into this reaction. The top five mysterious unsolved cases. Okay. Jackie Sutton. In late October 2015, seasoned British journalist Jackie Sutton arrived at a Turkish airport to catch her connecting flight to Iraq, where she'd been working with the free speech organization IWPR. Hours later, she was found dead in an airport restroom. Reportedly, Jackie Sutton had committed suicide, hanging herself using one of her own shoelaces. I'm about to cry, okay? I'm about to cry. I'm literally about to cry because, um... I feel like I experienced something like that and it's like it's it's weird because people I don't like the fact that something can happen to somebody and nobody wants to investigate into the situation I've been very open with you guys about uh, my sister passing away and they automatically after they walked in and seen the scene they said she committed suicide so i always run with that like you know my sister committed suicide because that's what was given to us that's what it that's what it was viewed as like my sister was a very depressed person so automatically they said it was suicide but the story of how my sister passed away does not add up and that's why I said like this is like so similar like a shoestring you 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 hung yourself with a shoe with a shoestring huh the shoestring hold held your held your body weight huh no. and here's where things get even stranger Early reports by the Turkish media stated that Jackie Sutton had become very upset after missing her flight to Iraq okay. because she couldn't afford to purchase a new ticket. However, later reports revealed that Sutton could have easily paid for a new ticket. She was found carrying over 2,000 euros and two credit cards. Even more suspicious, another security camera clip taken shortly before Jackie Sutton's death shows her carrying what appears to be a shopping bag containing purchases made at the duty-free shop in the airport. Critics have argued that it seems highly unlikely that Jackie Sutton would suddenly decide to do a bit of shopping shortly before committing suicide. So was Jackie Sutton's death a suicide or something more sinister? Wow. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I don't know. I Honestly, I think... Okay, so we're just going to speak on it, right? Depression doesn't really have a look. I don't know if she was depressed or not but i'm just saying because people technically people who commit suicide are depressed so that's why i'm speaking on that um she could have been shopping because she was sad like i do that a lot I, and i admit to it like if i feel depressed or like sad or anything i'll just go and just spend money so who knows she could have been upset and was just like trying to cheer herself up but then felt like it was like too overwhelming and decided to do what she did which was like you know take her life but it's the fact that they were saying how she didn't have money to pay for another flight but technically she did like i don't know it it, it just wasn't 
it wasn't sitting right with me if, if anything it sounds like she was trying to get away from somebody and that's why she needed to have that particular flight at that time so she could have gotten away because it's, she said they said she had money so it's like if she had the money to catch a new flight it wouldn't have been a thing it wouldn't have been a, a big of a deal like yeah she would have been mad that she lost some money but um she wouldn't have been that man like you, you know you would have got over it but you lying saying you didn't have money to catch a new flight it's not like she was trying to get away from somebody Lars Matank Lars Matank was a young German man who went on a holiday trip with friends to Varna, Bulgaria. While there, Matank was involved in a fight with some other tourists and suffered a ruptured eardrum. Oh wow. Because of the ear injury, Lars Matank was unable to fly, so he couldn't return to Germany with his friends. He rented a room in a hostel in a poor area of Varna, Bulgaria, determined to wait until his ear had healed enough so that he could fly back to Germany. However, that same night, Lars Matank called his mother and said that there was something strange about the hostel that he was staying in and that she should cancel all of his credit cards. Even later that same night, Lars Matank left his hostel room in a panic, headed for the airport. Wow. He called his mother again, this time saying that four strange men were following him and that he was hiding. See, this is why I would love to leave the country just to like, you know, explore and, um, you know, just, just view around the world. But I'm honestly scared because they do like crazy stuff out there and it's like i'm a woman so they take advantage of women they like you know do the sex traffic and stuff and 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 i love my life so i rather not get involved in any of that and it's sad that you know you will feel like you can't even travel to certain um countries because of that but yeah, that sounds crazy. Two hours later, Lars Matank caught a cab and arrived at the Varna airport in the early morning hours. On airport security cameras, Lars can be seen entering the airport with his luggage. Okay. But minutes later, he is seen running from the airport in a panic, leaving his luggage behind. Eyewitnesses say that Lars Matank ran to a barbed wire fence that surrounds the airport climbed over the fence, and then disappeared into some nearby woods. Wow. To this day, Lars Matank has never been found. His family wow. asked that anyone with any info as to his current location contact them via their website or Facebook page. Wow. That's crazy. Brian Schaefer. One of the strangest disappearances on record is that of Brian Schaefer, an Ohio State medical student. On March 31st, 2006, Brian Schaefer decided to go out for a night on the town with some of his college friends. They met at the Ugly Tuna Saluna, an upstairs bar at Ohio State South Campus. That's a funny name. Brian can be seen arriving at the bar with his two friends. They're smiling and laughing as they exit the escalator to the second floor bar. Around 10 p.m., Brian called his longtime girlfriend, with whom he had planned a spring break getaway to Miami a few days later. Brian told her that he loved her and would see her soon. Brian's girlfriend said that the call was nothing out of the ordinary. Later, Brian Schaefer is seen again on security camera near the escalators, talking okay. to two girls. He seems to say goodbye and then heads back into the bar. Brian Schaefer was never seen again. Security cameras covering the only exits of the Ugly Tuna Saluna bar do not show Brian Schaefer ever leaving. The only possible other exit would have been through an area of the bar that was under heavy construction at the time and closed off to the public. So where did he go? So where did he go? However, even if Schaefer had left through the construction area, there are multiple other security cameras in the bar's vicinity. None of these cameras picked up footage of Brian Schaefer ever leaving the bar. It's almost as if Brian Schaefer disappeared into thin air in the middle of a crowded bar. Wow. Alan Jill. On the evening wow. of February 23rd, 2014, Alan Jill took a strange trip through Cornwall, England. Captured by surveillance cameras, Jill spent his evening wandering the streets of several different cities for hours. He was seen in Wadebridge, then traveled by bus to Truro, then on to Newquay, then back to Paris. 
No one knows why Alan Jill took this strange trip, or what he was doing wandering the streets of four different cities all night. The next morning, the dead body of Alan Jill was found washed up on the shore of Perrinporth Beach. Jill was naked except for one sock and one shoe. But the story gets even stranger. Alan Jill's other sock was found wadded up inside his mouth, wrapped in the cord of a pair of earbud-type headphones. Near his body was a black jacket containing a wallet with 95 British pounds, but his bank cards, credit cards, and ID were missing. Wow. However, the wallet contained a single bizarre picture, Alan Jill as a child. Even stranger, the jacket the wallet was found in was not the one that Alan Jill had been wearing on the night of his death. Initially, Alan Jill's death was thought to just be a very strange suicide. However, like that they keep doing that how are you oh my goodness Headphones are often. Wow. an autopsy revealed multiple unexplained injuries to Alan Jill's right hand chest and head police ruled the death as suspicious the case still remains unsolved and no one knows exactly what happened to Alan that Jill. is crazy That's crazy. This Jameson is going to be a good family. one. Cause it one of the most bizarre disappearances in recent history is that of the Jamison family of Uvala, Oklahoma. Pastor Gary Brandon claims that the Jamisons told him that their home was haunted by angry spirits. Okay. Jamison said that they had made contact with the spirits of a dead family in their house and that their six-year-old daughter Madison often talked to the ghost family's child. The Jamisons said that two of the ghosts were called Emily and Michael and that one of the apparitions had wings like an angel. Allegedly fearing for the safety of his family, Bobby Jamison had asked Pastor Brandon if there were quote-unquote special bullets that he could use to fight off the intruding spirits. What? Pastor Brandon... Bullets are, people, are for people who are alive, not for people who are dead. Um... No, 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 I didn't watch the plenty of, like, you, you know the show Supernatural, y'all know the show Supernatural. I watched Supernatural before, and they had a few guns, but it's like, it doesn't really kill them. What? It also said that Jameson mentioned that he had obtained a quote-unquote satanic Bible in order to oh, attempt no. to ward off the ghostly beings. On October 8, 2009, the Jameson family loaded their pickup truck for a trip. It can be seen on their own front yard security camera moving things from their house to their truck. Bizarrely, the family seems to be in some sort of daze or trance-like state, making dozens of trips back and forth from the house to the truck, but never talking to each other once. Wait, angry? After loading the truck, the Jamisons pulled out of the driveway and were never seen alive again. Wow. Eight days later, the Jamisons pickup truck was found by the side of the road, locked inside the truck with the Jamisons' wallets and IDs, their cell phones, and $32,000 cash. Also locked inside the truck was- $32,000 cash? They took out all of their safe- It's just not making sense. Family small dog, which was nearly dead from starvation. Wow. A massive statewide search was launched for the family over the next eight months, but nothing was found. Multiple theories were circulated. One that Bobby and Cheryl and Jameson had been meth users and had been involved in a meth deal gone bad. Wow. This theory would also explain their trance-like state in the final video of the family. However, absolutely no evidence of drug use was found when police searched the Jameson family. If this has something to do with drugs, and this is why they say don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Stay sober. Like, you never know. Stay home. Four years after the Jamison family's disappearance, deer hunters stumbled across some skeletal remains in a remote area of the Eufaula Mountains, less than three miles from where the Jamison's truck had been found. The bodies were forensically identified as the remains of the Jamison family. Wow. However, the bodies were so badly decomposed that no cause of death could be determined. The reason for the Jamison family's strange behavior and the cause of their death remains a mystery to this day. Wow. That's crazy. That was that was crazy. Oh my goodness. Comment down below what's the next reaction you would like to see. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Click those links down below and follow me on Instagram and I will be back with another video.